Now that doesn't mean the law doesn't have its own consequences. I'm not suggesting that. I'm saying the feeling coming from God towards you is that, oh, the poor person just did another thing to harm themselves. That's sad. Right? And of course, God doesn't feel it's that sad. Right? God feels it's sad for you that you would choose such a thing. Because it's certainly not sad for God. God created the law in the first place. Why would he be sad about you breaking it? Focus on forgiveness. God always forgives. And in repentance and mercy, under what circumstances do you receive divine love? Right? We need to look at that because it, under the same circumstances you receive divine love is the same circumstances that full love can come from your partner. And it's also the same circumstances under which you can give full love to your partner. So if we look at the way God treats you and then replicate that in your relationship, you've got some really powerful things you can do in the relationship to rapidly change and grow in the relationship. So what we want to do is focus on those things and then we're going to have a little discussion at the end if we get time about the soulmate relationship. Because many of you are wanting to meet your soulmates or feel you've met your soulmates or whatever. And... Uh, and we want to give you some warnings about soulmate relationship. <laughs> right? So, uh, so that, that's a really important thing for us to do at some point as well. Now, when we talk about the soulmate relationship, we are not going to be discussing the whole thing about the whole details and truth about the soulmate relationship. I'll be actually delivering that discussion at another time, and hopefully myself and Mary will be delivering that discussion. In this particular discussion, we're looking at the soulmate relationship and what kind of emotions you can expect to go through with your soulmate. Does that make sense? So let's have can a I, break. Can I just Sorry? add something yeah. about the, um, you, you put at the top there, ex the expression of divine love between partners. And um, I was just going to, in case I'm not back after the break, talk about, um, I knew a lot of truth about the expression of divine love between partners, so I should be enabling my partner's free will and uh, a lot of things that AJ will talk about in that section. But because I wanted to skip over the, the next things, like focusing on taking emotional responsibility, I just, I didn't get very far. So be careful not to get caught up in the, the rules, as it were, of expressing divine love in a partnership without looking at all of these other things. Yeah. It's really important because, you're, because in the end, many of us still want a book of rules so that we can avoid actually working through the, all of this in a real way. Right? God wants you to work through it in a real way, which means actually feeling your emotions through it all, not looking at the book of rules and just accepting the rules. Right? All right, let's have a break. Should we say 45 minutes? It's long enough for everyone to have a chat. And, and uh, Mary drives and I just sit on the computer, you know, doing notes for another seminar or something like that. And, and I was doing some notes for the seminar next week. Yeah, you can come and join me, of course. Whatever you want. It's up to you. It's up to you. <laughs> um, and uh, so I, uh, we got out the notes for the seminar and I got a bit bored with them after a while, <laughs> half an hour or something. <laughs> and so instead I noticed this folder on my computer of all these songs that I downloaded, you know, the words to the songs, because I, I, I like playing guitar and I've downloaded a heap of music that I finish up transcribing into Excel files. Anyway, it's a long story and you don't want to hear that. And... Um, Anyway, so it, what we did is we start, I start seeing all these untranscribed songs that I haven't done yet, uh, which I started doing years and years ago, and they're still sitting on my computer. <laughs> so we started singing them on the way down, and uh, poor Mary had to deal with my out-of-tune voice singing all of these, <laughs> these songs all the way down, and we missed a couple of turn-offs as a result. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with my driving at all. No, nothing to do with Mary's driving. And, uh, and so we finished up having about a, a 35 or 40 minute extra drive <laughs> out of the city than what we expected. Yeah, such is, such is life, eh? Um, what I want to do now is start going through some of these, some of these things with you. And, uh, but what I feel from you is that there's a lot of tentative, tentativeness in the audience today. Do you feel that? Like, um, so it's not a feeling. It's not a feeling of like abject fear or terror, but there is a feeling of a fear of exposure. 
a feeling of uh, personal exposure. So what I'd li love to be able to do with you is interact with you on a more personal level than that. And we start, you know, when we raise some of these issues, if you, I don't, I'm perfectly happy for you to bring up personal things and we discuss what's going on emotionally and what we would do on the divine love path dealing with those emotions. But don't feel like you have to, but if you don't, then I'm just going to kick you out anyway. And this is, <laughs> no, no, I won't do that. But honestly, we need to get used to exposing ourselves. Because if you don't expose yourself, what you're really trying to do is still cover over truth inside of yourself. And if you cover over truth inside of yourself and you want to do that, how can God help you expose it? You're using your own free will to cover it over. God can't help you in that situation to expose and to actually see what's going on. So my suggestion is to just allow yourself to feel that nervousness that you feel when you might have the mic in front of you exposing and the nervousness you feel about thousands of other people hearing your life. No, nobody feels nervous about that. And just let it come out because you'll find, in fact, that often your experience is a mirror of thousands of other people's experiences and you can help thousands of people in this process of just being open and exposed, which is the reason why... Mary and myself do that with you. All right, let's uh, look at the first thing. Expressing divine love between partners. Now, the key thing with this, and you notice the first point, the first list of points that I've put there with regard to this, is you look at everything the way God does things, and what we try to do is mirror the way God does things towards our partner, ourselves, in our treatment of our partner and ourselves. Does that make sense? It's just, a, just, a, it's just a getting what God does and putting it into your own life and into your own heart and running with that. Basically, that's the principle of it. Of course, it's a bit more complicated than that in the sense of doing it, but the principle of it is that. So, what wouldn't we do if we were acting in harmony with divine love? What's the first thing on the list? You know, someone, do you want to someone want to talk into a microphone? And Mike, we, we'll have to be on the ball here a fair bit. Go on. You want to? Does anyone want it? Nobody. Sarai, Sarai. Sarai, you want it? Thanks, Sarai. What's the first thing in the list? Uh, be, to be truthful at all times to the best of your ability. Okay. So we don't compromise on truth. Ever. Now, see, I want to change it from the best of your ability <laughs> to ever. You want it to be the best of your ability. Oh, probably. well, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm aware that I have a lot of, I run a lot of self-deception about what my truth might be. Okay, okay. But that doesn't matter. What I'm saying is that doesn't matter. What matters is whatever your truth is at the moment, you mm. need to be totally uncompromising with that with your partner. It doesn't mean that you won't change it. Right? Because you, you may have a process of emotion and feel totally the opposite thing tomorrow. That's the thing you need to be aware of. But right at this moment, you need to not compromise with the truth at all. At all. Now, you know, every time we've done a presentation about truth, you know what's happened, what I've got from the audience? Lots of doubts about truth. Hardly any of us feel that truth is going to be a powerful thing. Does that make sense? Trust me, truth is the most powerful thing you can do. The truth sets you free. AJ, one of the things I have is sometimes I don't even know what my truth is, except my body feels so bad. Okay, so let's say I don't know what the truth is. Like, I feel angry and I don't even know why. So what would I tell my partner? I feel angry and I don't even know why. Exactly use why I felt. Does that make sense? Exactly that. That's what I say. I feel angry and I don't know why. And just leave it like that. You don't have to do anything more than that. Just say what you feel at every moment. Be what you feel. That is a very, very powerful thing to do. Now in practice, what are we often doing instead? 
Yeah, actually, yeah, I had a feeling for that guy who just walked over past the door. He was quite handsome and I noticed that, right? My partner doesn't want to know that. What, what will he think if I tell him that? Can you see what we do? So we keep that little feeling to myself. Right? Why do I keep that feeling to myself? Fear is the reason why I keep that feeling to myself. Yeah, fear. What am I afraid of? I'm afraid of all sorts of things. If I tell my partner, he might get angry. So what am I avoiding? His anger. So there's an emotion. Why do I avoid people's anger? I'm actually compromising the truth to avoid their anger. Wow, that emotion will get triggered when I tell him the truth and it triggers his anger, won't it? Can you see that? You see, every, just staying, staying in truth at every moment will bring up every emotion that you're trying to lock down within yourself. So many of us are saying, I just can't seem to get the emotion. I just can't seem to get the emotion. I'm saying, do you tell the truth to everyone? No, but I just can't seem to get the emotion. <laughs> tell the truth to everyone and you'll get to the emotions really rapidly, trust me. I can, I can vouch for that. <laughs> yeah, Mary can vouch for that. Like, gee, your life just goes, whoa. It's like into supercharge mode, you know. That's what happens. So, when we're on the divine love path in a relationship, we do not avoid telling the truth to our partner. I'd like to know, um, what do we do when our partners are not on the divine love path and we are wanting or choosing, or in the process of choosing to be? We do exactly the same thing as if they were on the divine love path. Because it, cause can you see that when we're on the divine love path, we're living in truth. We're living in love. We're living in owning our emotions. All of those things are going to benefit your relationship whether they are on the divine love path or not. Right? The problem is that we go down the track first of trying to go into our mind about all this and then we go down the track of saying, well, he's not on the divine love path, so he's not going to react very well to me telling him that I was just like the like of the look of that guy over there. I actually right? do tell him. Sorry? Yeah. I don't keep that secret. Okay, good. And then how does he react? Uh, he suppresses everything. That's okay, he's allowed to. How do you react? <laughs> I, I, I don't say it that often, so... But I speak a different language to him. And he thinks that I'm crazy. When I'm expressing, yep. he thinks that I'm crazy. Yep. So how do you feel about that? Really shit it off. Yeah. Angry, furious. And I actually do throw things at him. Yep. And I smash a lot of things in my house. I'm yep. so furious. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. But, but then you're out of harmony with love now, aren't you? Yeah, I am a lot. All right. So, so the question you've got to ask yourself, all right, I get so angry that I just feel like throwing things. Mm. Right. So that's fine. Mm. You know, have you got a little alcove or like a concrete alcove outside? Or something like that? You just go outside and throw them at that. Okay. You know what I mean? And just express your emotions. You don't need to throw them at your partner. Because when you're doing it at him, you want him to stop thinking you're crazy. Yeah. You're now blaming him for your emotional response, which is now off the path. He's someone who follows me around when I'm just trying to express it as well. Yeah. Which doesn't detract from what you just said, that I'm blaming him. Yep. I know I am. Yeah. And that you'll find when you release the blame of him, he will feel released from doing a lot of things towards you. Does that make sense to you? And the, this is a problem that we face. So, so first thing to remember, if our partner's on the divine love path or off of it, it doesn't matter. If I'm on the path, I need to do the same things either way. That's number one. Second thing, if I'm getting into rage with my partner, it's because I want my partner to change. Right? <laughs> that is an unloving projection at my partner. Do you follow me? They don't ha God doesn't want them to change. Like, God doesn't force them to change. And I don't mean want them in the sense of desire. I mean force them into changing. When we're getting angry with our partner, we are trying to force them into doing something we want. Right? And that is out of harmony with love. That's out of harmony with free will. So, as soon as I'm out of harmony with free will, I just say to my partner, I'm out of harmony with free will. 
sorry, sorry, you know, like, and own the emotion, you know, own what it is inside of you. Why do I want to blame them? Because then I can avoid this emotion that's in me. What's the emotion in me? What is it? Go into the emotion. Now, tell the emotion that's in you to him, that's fine. So the emotion is, you don't care about me. That's the feeling I have. You don't care about me. And they'll say, yes, I do care about you. But you could then say to them, well, no, hang a sec. I know you think you care about me, but I don't feel cared for here. Does that make sense? And then go off and feel that emotion. Process through that emotion. You'll find it's related to some stuff with Dad and so forth, and you process that through that emotion. And then afterwards, you'll know whether he cares for you or not. Similar to what Mary pointed out before, right? when you're saying how you flick through the, the hours of the week and realise that you only had three or four or five or whatever it is hours that you know, that you really had quality time and that didn't feel caring. You come to that realisation after you've processed the emotion. So then you could say to him, hang a sec, you know, after I process this emotion, I still feel that actually you don't care for me really. Now what are we going to do about that? You're telling me that you are caring for me but I don't feel cared for in this thing, in this relationship. I feel that I'm not important to you in this relationship. So can you see, you then allow that emotion. Can you see, just me saying the truth of it gets you to cry about it, let alone... So, so it's right there, the, the emotion's right there, ready to be felt. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really good. When you kick into that anger place, then what you're doing is avoiding the pain of that emotion. And understand that every time you're in the anger place like that, that adult anger place, you're in the avoidance of the pain of the emotion. That's a totally different place than the childhood anger place of owning the emotional anger, expressing the anger to, to yourself, through yourself, but not at people around you. You see, there's a bit, what, what I would call a manipulative projection is when we're angry with another person because we want their behaviour to change. Does that make sense? Libby just got that. I, I just didn't think there was any other kind of anger available. <laughs> no, there, there is. There is. I, if, you, if you took your things that you're throwing at your hubby and just went and threw them at the barbecue and really connected to how it feels when a man thinks I'm crazy for just being me, I, I can feel you'd go really deep really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have the capacity, and in fact many of you ladies have the capacity to process your emotions very rapidly once you get through your anger barrier. But the problem is that what's keeping you in suppression is your anger barriers, your judgement of your anger in, in particular. Does that make sense? So I'm not judging your anger, what I'm saying is, although many in the audience did judge your anger, what I'm saying is, right, that you need to allow yourself to be angry, but don't project it at your husband because when you're projecting it at your husband what you're doing then is you're wanting him to change his behaviour and as soon as you do that you are out of harmony with God. Right? You're breaking some of God's laws and it's always going to be painful when you break one of God's laws. <laughs> always. And of course the pain often is the man getting back at you. You know what I mean? That's part of that pain. He's too shut down for that. Yeah. Which is a good thing for me, but not for In him. In your case, he walks away even further, perhaps, or distances himself even further, which actually exacerbates the emotion you feel. But that's what you need to feel that core emotion. Allow yourself to feel that. Yeah. Jen? Sorry, Mike. Up in the I'm afraid to be the real me. I don't know who the real me is to express and so I be anything else but that. Yep. Anything else. Yep. Now, now, just to give you an idea, Jen, that you're not alone, how many of the rest of you feel like you're pretty afraid, after you've done some emotional work now, you're pretty afraid of what you're saying? So, can you see you're not alone? Like That's like the majority of the audience. Yeah. So, the key is to understand that what we're seeing in ourselves right at this moment is not the real You're never going to discover the real you unless you feel your emotions. This is one truth of the universe, in fact. 
You're never going to be the real you until you feel all of your emotions, whatever they are. Then, when you release the ones that are disharmonious with love, you will become what you are potentially able to be. Now that's going to be a changing process, isn't it? So don't hold on to your current definition of yourself. You, you need to give that up. Yeah? I just felt you wanted to say something when I said that. <laughs> what was that? Uh, I was just thinking about how um, afraid I have been to go to some of my dark emotions and when I connected with some of my anger, um, when I took it away from you and I just connected with some of my stuff, I, fe I felt quite afraid of what I was what was inside of me. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I, uh, I felt some more of that that I felt um, this really deep feeling of repentance and a, f a longing to God to please take this away from me because I know it's not a part of me. Yeah. Whereas before I really identified this is me, these emotions are me. When I allowed myself to go into them, I could feel, oh my gosh, this, this feels so ugly and in me just please take it away from me so yeah. and that's the thing is that many of us still are identifying with our emotional injuries as the, as if they are a part of ourselves but the truth is they entered you like you entered your mother's womb free of them and from that moment on you got them right and you can be free of them again and when you're free of them then you'll know who you really are but not before then, really. Now, you, it'll be a growing process towards knowing who you really are. The key is to have courage that keep on the process and you will eventually discover who you really are, Jen. So in my relationship with Graham, um, I, it's 14 months now and I haven't really been expressing the real me. That's right. Because I'll give, give him anything he wants. Yep. Be any kind of woman he wants. Yep. And uh, I don't want to be like that anymore. No. I no, want no. to find me. You know. Yep. Yeah, I know exactly. Like I've done that for 13 years. I know what that's like. Because you know you invest so much in the emotions you get back from your partner that you finish up just doing every your partner's desires are your desires. You don't even know who you are anymore. But the crazy thing is, is that he wants me to be the real me too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know who that is. Yeah, you're afraid of who that is. Yeah. Yeah. Just behind you, Jen. Um, I'm just wondering. Uh, how, when you know when to exit a relationship? We'll talk about that later. Okay. It's part of our discussion later. Is that alright? But it might be tomorrow, unfortunately. Um, if you're not going to be here tomorrow, no, then you'll miss out on it. <laughs> <laughs> two minutes, two minutes. Uh. Well, we've got, to skip, we've got to skip a lot of stuff before we get to that. Perhaps if you talk about the other principles of divine love between partners, I think it makes it a lot clearer. If you feel you're going to compromise yourself in any of these ways. Yeah, maybe I can just give an overview generally for you. If you are compromising your own desires and your own love of yourself all the time in a relationship, there's two choices you have. One is that you stay in the relationship and work through every issue why you compromise yourself and if you still feel the other person after you've done that still wants you to compromise yourself then you would be forced if you loved yourself to leave. It doesn't mean that you might not come back some other time but if you cannot love yourself in the relationship then right at this moment, so there's been many times with myself and Mary where I've left <laughs> Right? Or, Mary, or I've asked Mary to leave and she has right? and the reason why is because at that moment I felt to stay would be compromising my love of self so let's say my partner is dumping lots and lots and lots of rage on me all the time if I am staying in the relationship the first thing I've got to realise is hang on a sec there's an emotion in me that accepts another person's rage 
I need to deal with that emotion. If I don't deal with that emotion and I enter another relationship, I'm just going to attract another partner who is in a rage with me and I'll still have to deal with that emotion. So well, I'm not suggesting to not deal with the emotion. Do you understand? However, if they're in a rage with me constantly and, and I love myself, I, I, there's no way I can... I can't beat them up to stop them from being in a rage with me. I can't throw things at them to stop them from being in a rage with me. I can't stamp my feet even if I'm in harmony with divine love in order to stop them from doing it. I can talk to them and tell them, what you're doing is hurting me. And if you continue doing this, I am going to leave. And then when they do it again, you leave. Right? That is an act of love for yourself. And you could say to them, look, I still love you. And, and you know, when you stop doing this and work through the reasons why you want to do this, I'd be very happy to, for, for us to get back together. So myself and Mary have done that, I don't know how many times. Lots. Yeah, I can't even really count how many times at this point. <laughs> so, um, so we've done that lots, right? Where, where one or both of us has felt, no, this isn't very good because one or both of us is projecting anger at the other and we need to stop this and we need to own what's going on and we've gone away and owned what's going on. Sometimes it's been a week later, sometimes it's been two weeks later, sometimes it's been three months later when we've got back together. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, sorry, the question is, yeah, because um, it, it's not coming through the mic. The question is, even when you have children involved, what do I do? The same thing you would do as if you had no children involved is the answer. And the reason why that has to be the case is because actually, if children are involved, you staying in an unloving situation towards yourself, what you're doing is you're teaching your girl children, in your case, because you're a woman, if you had girl children. Well, but if you had a girl child, you're teaching your girl children in that particular situation that women get treated badly and that's what love is. And you're, treat, you, you, you're teaching your boy children in that situation that a boy or a man is allowed to be angry with a woman and nothing's ever going to be done about it. So can you see, even for the sake of your children, you would need to actually say, enough's enough now. My child is getting taught enough bad things here. I need to withdraw from this. Now, what usually happens is there's a group of emotions we need to work through to get to that point. Does that make sense for both of you? So there's a group of emotions we need to allow ourselves to feel. So feel the emotions as to why you allow a man, to, for instance, and I'm giving an example, to be angry with you all the time and stay. Why do you allow that? Or why do you allow a man to treat you like you're not even there? Why do you stay in that? And you'll always find some really deep causal emotions about love of self in that. Right? Deal with those emotions. Work your way through those emotions. And then, after you've worked your way through those emotions, you will feel like you'll know what to do in the situation when you work your way through those emotions. Don't stay in relationships where you cannot love yourself. That's one of the points, remember, in this list. If you look at it, I think, which one is it? Uh, one, two, three, four down on the second page, fourth point down. We don't compromise our love for ourselves in any circumstance. That's, can you see that? Page two. We do not compromise. Fourth point, the fourth, not the main points, but the, right at the top it is. Fourth thing down, we do not compromise our love of for ourselves in any circumstance when we're on the divine love path. Right? So if you know what is loving towards yourself and you are allowing the other person to continue to treat you in an unloving manner, firstly, there's a group of emotions that cause you to deal with that. So look at those emotions. But secondly, this is not a loving thing to do. You are not in harmony with divine love at this point. Because God loves you. And God does not ever want you to compromise your love of you. Does that make sense? Yep. So that's just a general answer to that. Mary and then down front. This is Mike here. Yep. Well, I've been in several abuse of emo um, relationships. And one of the major emotion that has to be processed, and it's been mentioned quite a lot today, 
is fear. And I mean, you've talked about externalising anger and grief, and the fear is a really, uh, to me, one of the major emotions that has to be released either through screaming into a pillow yep. or into a towel. And you'll feel it towel. bodily. Yep. And that's, that's usually the major emotion to first process when you're in a relationship like some of the ones you've been talking because about. Because a lot of times you're afraid to leave for another reason. Well, so and that, but also that fear is very, um, often goes back to your childhood too. And it fear also often parents. goes back to the violent, yeah, the violent, <laughs> violent childhood. Yeah, yeah. yep, exactly right. Yep. In front. Hi, AJ. How are you doing? Um, good. Um, I just want to say for me, um, I've been in abusive relationships with, with a lot of anger, angry men, and um, I can see the reason why I would stay is because I was afraid to feel I feel unlovable. Yes. And that's what I've hit recently. Yes. I've actually hit... And, I felt like that was me. Yep. When I hit that, I felt like that's the real me. I and am it was unlovable. A very yeah. dark, very dark, lonely place yeah, to hit. Is. I felt like I'm going to be in this forever. This is me. I'm unlovable. Yeah. And um, I just kept praying for God's help in that. Yes. And I feel like I'm actually coming out of it a bit and I, yeah. I'm actually feeling sweetness in me that I don't think I've ever really fe felt that's before. that's a good sign that you're coming out of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it was... I've really, had very I, deep emotions of the same type of experience. Yeah. I, and, you know, and I had to go right, went right back into my childhood and I did feel a lot of the time unlovable. I was yep. never hugged as a child. Yeah. Never told I was loved. So, you yep. know, it was a real feeling. Yes. Um, and that's, I've attracted angry men and stayed in it because I didn't want to feel that. Exactly. So. Yeah. But, that's um, awesome. Yeah. It's really intense to go there. It's a bit of a relief. It's sad, isn't it, that we can spend 20, 30 years of our life attracting all of these relationships from one emotion that we just don't want to heal within ourselves. And then when we get to healing the emotion within ourselves, we look at back at all that and feel there's this terrible feeling sometimes of oh what a waste of my life like if I just felt that emotion way back then this whole life would have been different and that's a, that's a fact of life unfortunately that when we process some of these emotions we realise that we could have processed them much much earlier than we did yeah yeah and even though it was it was a really dark emotion it wasn't that bad exactly. You didn't die yeah. from it, did you? No. no. Sometimes it's the fear of the emotion that's, yeah. for me anyway, oh, much worse. worse than actually when I get to the actual emotion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Spot on. Yeah. So can you notice in the list already, we've covered the two things in that first list that we're talking about in that second page, and that is our willingness to compromise our love of ourselves. When you're on the divine love path, you are not willing to compromise the love of yourself. So every time you do, you notice, well, oh, just did that again. Why did I do that? And every time you've done it, you will notice there's an emotional reason why. There'll be an emotional thing you can access underneath it. It's an awesomely powerful tool for you to get to what's going on underneath inside of yourself. Another thing we talked about was how you'll never compromise even your love of truth. Right? So in other words, every time I tell my little white lie, bang, I just compromise love of truth. It's up to me to notice that. Not, not anyone else. Me to notice that. And if I notice it, I'll go, hmm, emotion. Emotion underneath there somewhere. Does that make sense? And if whatever that emotion is, I can get into that emotion, then I'll be relieved of this having to tell lies or withhold truth from people. And you know what? You'll go around all of your life telling truth to everyone. And it's such a relief, hey? It's like, it's an amazing relief. Um, I once had a discussion with my younger son, Caleb, and he said, Dad, um, I can't understand people very much. <laughs> and he was about like, 16 or 17 or something at the time. He said, people don't know how easy it is to tell the truth all the time compared to not telling the truth all the time. And you think about that. It's a lot easier. You don't have to remember what you said. 
You don't have to worry about offending anybody. Right? You don't have to worry about what their response is going to be. You don't have to care about how you might be harmed. Because all of those things just go away. You don't have to worry about what you're saying. Because if you said the wrong thing, you just say, oh, I'm sorry, I said the wrong thing, then I'll you know, say something different. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to worry about judgment. <coughs> Now, these are all the emotions that will be triggered when you decide to tell the truth all the time. But once you get through all of those emotions, you will feel like you can tell the truth to anybody and it doesn't matter. It does not matter to you. You know? Did you have an affair when you were, you know, when you were married? Yes, I did. Like, that's, you'll be able to say that if that's what happened in your life. And you won't feel judgment about that for yourself even once you've dealt with all the emotions. Right? Every single thing will be so much easier. Can you imagine that? What that would be like, just that one thing. Right. On the Divine Love Path, we don't compromise our love for our partner. Right? So if I'm angry with my partner, am I compromising my love for my partner? Yes. So straight away I need to look at what the emotion is inside of myself. Can you see that? So when I love, my, when I am in the divine love path, I don't compromise my partner's love of herself. That's an interesting thing. See, I, I'm really good at compromising my love of myself. So often I want to do things that put me last, and AJ is always pulling me up and going, "Why are you doing this? You I don't can't want to do be this doing with this." You, you know, yeah. we go shopping. She likes a dress, right? She, she likes a dress, she tries it on. I can't buy this. Why can't you buy this? Oh, because it's too much money or I've got too many dresses now or whatever, right? Whatever it is. And, and I'm saying to... But, but you're compromising your love of yourself now. Like, can you see that? She wants it. There's a desire for it. We've got the money to buy it, but she doesn't want to get it. So, so what I do then is so say, hang on a sec, Mary, like, I, I can't agree with this. So we sit down in the middle of our, uh, don't we? This is what we do. <laughs> we sit down in the middle of the Mike's shopping Mike's been center. present on one of our uh, early shopping trips, <laughs> and I was very emotionally triggered. <laughs> so we sit down in the middle of the shopping centre and we start talking about why it is that you want to compromise your love of yourself. <laughs> don't we? And then usually I go and buy the thing anyway. <laughs> just to drum at home. <laughs> but you see, when I don't want to compromise Mary's love of myself, I, of herself, I am not going to ask Mary to do something that would actually compromise herself. So I'm feeling Mary doesn't want to make tea tonight. Right? I am not going to go and ask Mary to make tea tonight. If I know Mary doesn't want to make tea tonight. Even if she promised she was going to make tea tonight. So, you know, in our house we cook, you know, pretty evenly, like myself or Mary. And sometimes, you know, Mary says, oh, I'll cook tomorrow night or whatever. And then tomorrow night comes and she might be in an emotion, right? And I, if I can feel that she's in that emotion and she doesn't want to cook that night, I don't say, well, you said you're going to cook last night, da 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 da. I'm now compromising her love of self. Can you see that? She's in her emotion. She's loving herself right at that moment. As soon as I'm asking her to go ahead and do something different, I'm asking her to compromise her love of herself. Divine love doesn't do that. God doesn't do that. God never asked Mary to comp compromise herself. So if I do it, I'm out of harmony with my connection with God. Straight away. As soon as I do that. That's a really powerful one, isn't it, that one? You know? And then, and then also... I, what if I'm trying to ask Mary to compromise her love of God? <coughs> she, divine love wouldn't do that either, would it? So, so her love of God might mean that she wants to tell the truth about something about me that I'm ashamed of. You know? And so that... Now, if I want her to lie about it or withhold the truth, what am I doing now? I'm asking Mary to shut down her connection with God in order to please me. And divine love doesn't do that either. And I've, I've done this with you 
with your love of self and love of God when if you're triggered emotionally and it's about something that I've said or done and then I immediately want to make AJ feel better and fix it and, I, and I've actually then compromised his relationship with God and with himself mm. because he's not releasing the emotion that he needs to release. So if I'm emotionally blocked, am I going to be able to feel God? No. Am I going to even be able to feel my partner? No. And if I'm emotionally blocked, I'm not even really probably going to be able to feel myself, am I? Probably not, right? Now, if my partner wants me to be emotionally blocked, they're compromising quite a lot, aren't they? They're compromising our own relationship. They're compromising my relationship with God and my own relationship with myself. So, if I'm in harmony with divine love in that situation, you can see I wouldn't do that to my partner. Now, you notice I've left, I think I've only li listed about six or seven what you won't do. You comp won't compromise, and we've mentioned most of them already, right? Of the things you wouldn't do. Just wait for James to do nothing. <laughs> it's a good embarrassment thing, James, that one. <laughs> Here. He, he was just working up to feel the embarrassment. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, allow yourself to see where you're compromising divine love in your relationship. Can you see what I'm saying? Allow yourself to see it. Now what we'd like to do is mention a few of the practical examples here. Does that make sense? So, how does it look? All right. You see this happening quite often in a relationship where one of the partners wants the other partner to lie for them. To lie for them. All right. Now, often we see it happening with things like money. You know, like, okay, you're in a de facto relationship, one of the partners is on some social security. All right. The other partner's working. But one of the partners, the probably the, maybe the working one in the example I give, doesn't want the one who's in a de facto relationship to actually tell the social security that they are. Why? Because they get more money that way. Right. Now can you see what that's doing? You're being asked to compromise, you're asked, being asked to withhold the truth, which is a lie. Right? And as soon as you do that, you're compromising your relationship with God. You're also compromising your relationship with yourself. You're not going to feel your emotions about why you feel like you need to lie in that circumstance. All right. So what would you do on the divine love path? You would not agree with a partner asking you to do that. And you would go and tell the truth, even if it meant the breakup of your relationship. And even if it meant that you were $300 less a week in your pocket as a result of telling the truth. That's what you would do. You can see how the divine love stuff sort of makes you start getting some integrity? Yeah, so that's really powerful. How about another one? So next one's what I just said. Assisting or wanting my partner to shut down their emotions. Yeah, so Mary came up with that one. <laughs> She invented it. Yep. <laughs> I'm the original master. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another one. A social situation where I control what my partner talks about. I want them to avoid subjects that may make me uncomfortable and I'm addicted to other people's approval and want my partner co to conform to my addiction. So my partner starts talking about something that we feel embarrassed about or ashamed about. It might not even be something we've personally done. It just might be something that, a subject that we feel embarrassed about, that my partner always brings up in public conversation, for example. Right? As soon as I project at Mary an emotion that she shut down what she wants to discuss with another person, I am out of harmony with divine love. Can you see that? Because God doesn't want her to shut down what she wants to discuss with anyone. Even if what she wants to discuss is actually a lie. God doesn't want her to do that. And this, I, I'm also a master at this one too. <laughs> 
Um, we come up with these things because we're both masters at most of them at some point in our lives, you see. That's how we come up with this stuff. But it can be, it, just by even having the emotion, then you're out of harmony with love. The emotion of wanting the other person to shut up is avoiding another emotion inside of yourself, which is what you would feel if you didn't want them to shut up. Does that make sense? It might not be an action you're taking. Just the emotional projection is the error. Before you even open your mouth. Uh, um, if we can have the mic down the front seats, Mike. Thank you. Sounds a bit funny when I say the mic down the front seats, Mike, doesn't it? So. Oh, I've got a good example of this very, very uh, example. Just recently I, I asked my partner not to talk to other people about the fact that he wants us to live on a French canal boat for two years. And I don't want him to... I said to him, it's all right for him to tell people that he is living on a French canal boat for two years because I don't necessarily want to live on a French canal boat for two years. And uh, would he please not to refer to we? Yeah. And uh, I, I knew that I was in error as I was saying it and I realised it was to do with my emotions of not wanting to uh, be, be alone. Yeah. That people would back off me if they thought I was going away for two years. Yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, exactly what you're talking about. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Good example. Yep. And by the way, feel free to pipe up with any of your own examples with these things. Um, one thing I'd just like to point out, often we use techniques to control other people that seem pleasurable to the other person and so they don't notice them. <laughs> you notice that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do Paul's got an example. <laughs> <laughs> For example, like, like we know, you know, favourite cake always does the job. You know, and so, so we cook the favourite cake to, in order to, and along with it comes this attachment. Or even a more popular example in a relationship is sex generally. Right? Using sex as a way of shutting down the other person's expression. Right? We often do that. Of, or trying to manipulate them to get certain emotions back. So just be aware when you're using th things for impure motives. Right? including those things that are very enjoyable. All right, um, another practical example. I sexually projected another person other than my partner for sexual satisfaction, flirtation, or just to feel approval, acceptance, attractive, or secure. All right. Um, example of this. Um, there's so many examples, but if I say them, every person who knows me will know that I'm talking about them. He can talk about me. I can talk about them anyway, can't I? Yeah. Because yeah. you see, even doing that would be modifying what I'm trying to present to, for the sake of their emotion. Can you see that? Anyway, so, all right. Let's give you an example of this. Let's say a woman all of her life has had this very deep feeling of a lack of security that she doesn't want to feel. And in her life, the only way she's managed to get security is through a man providing it. Now, this security might be just financial security. You know, find a powerful man who is able to get a lot of money and you have a relationship with him, right? And then, you know, that doesn't work out, so you find another man, but he has to be a man who's got his stuff together. You know, he's got to be a man who also can earn a lot of money and you have another relationship with him and so forth. And, then, and, and this is done in a way to avoid her feelings of being insecure and avoid her feelings as a woman of feeling powerless to provide her own security. Does that make sense? That's the underlying emotion driving it. So what she does is she flirts with or sexually projects at at least another male other than the partner she's with in order to feel an emotion of secu I'm secure now, back from them. You see, oftentimes we view somebody as interested in us won't harm us. You see the relationship? If, I, if somebody's interested in me, then there's, a, then there's a chance they won't harm me. And the more interest I can generate in them, in me, even if they're not my partner, the safer I become. So that means that, it, and you'll see sometimes people doing this, flirtations with every person of the opposite sex around them 
to, just to so that they can feel secure inside of themselves. Right? That often can happen. Or it might be to feel like a special woman. Or it might be like to feel I'm a you know, manly man type of thing. You know? I'm the alpha male of the pack emotion that men seem to seem to want to go for a lot. And so what they do is they have a lot of female sexual conquests in order to feel good about themselves. What they really need to do is feel why they feel so bad about themselves sexually and why they need the, all these women to, feel, to have interactions with them before they can feel good. Do you see? This is one of the things. Now, on the divine love path, what would I do? I would stop projecting sexually and I would look very, very, very deeply at the inside emotions that I have inside of myself that cause me to trigger sexual projections. Now, many times our sexual projections have nothing to do with sex at all. Right? They often have to do with things like feeling unlovable, unwanted, not needed, not special, and, also, and you know, lots of other types of emotions are connected with what the reason why we may sexually project at somebody. Um, the last one. I get angry when my partner demonstrates through their actions they do not love me. And this has been one of my emotions that I've been, had to work through. I get resentful or go into other controlling behaviours such as silent treatment, etc. So let's say my partner, and some of you ladies uh, have pointed this out already really, this emotion. And my partner demonstrates through their actions they don't care for me. So one way they might do that is by sexually projecting at other women. If, if let's say I'm a woman in relationship with a male and he sexually projects at other women other than me, right? Or he might look at a lot of porn on the net, right? Or, some, or other things like that. And I feel each time like he doesn't love me, he doesn't care for me, he doesn't find me attractive. Now, in that situation, what many of us go into is anger. As soon as we go into the anger, we're now out of harmony with divine love. Does that make sense? Because we're not feeling the emotion inside of myself that I'm avoiding at that moment. I'm actually projecting it back at him. So the truth is, he is allowed to look at porn all he likes. I'm not saying it's good for him or good for your relationship. What I'm saying is he's allowed to do it. From God's perspective, he has free will and he's allowed to do anything he wants, even if it's in disharmony with love of self, love of you and love of God. He's allowed to do it. You getting angry with him is just trying to control his actions. Does that make sense? As soon as you try to control his actions, you are out of harmony. You're yelling at him, telling him that he's not loving you, and you right at that moment are not loving him either. Now, is that going to work, do you think, in a relationship? He's going to, he's going to say, oh, and your anger is loving too, is it? Like, do you think your anger is loving? Because it certainly doesn't feel loving to him, no matter what he's done, right? So can you see the relationship? Ask yourself, what does divine love do with me and my partner? What does God do with me? What does God do with my partner? That's what, I, in the end, I will be doing with me and I will be doing with my partner. Now, I say, in the end, because we're not there yet, right? When we're there, you'll know when you're there, because you'll be there completely. But until that point, notice when you're not doing it and understand that every time you don't do it, there's an emotion underneath it that needs to be addressed and looked at. And when you do that, you'll find you'll work through some quite deep core emotions very rapidly. Now, is there any questions about that section? Who else needed to be embarrassed? <laughs> I'll do it for you if you want. <laughs> Is there any questions you would like to ask about that? Um, I'll be back there, thanks. Uh, I hope this isn't off topic, but I'm interested to know what is a loving way to request change from your partner? Or is it not loving in any way to request change? Okay. Does God ever request change from you? 
What was your name again? Gwyneth. Gwyneth. Gwyneth, yeah. Gwyneth. God comes to your ear every day, doesn't he? And he says, Gwyneth? Gwyneth! Gwyneth! <laughs> <laughs> this happens every day for you. No. No, it doesn't, does it? No, no. So God doesn't do that, does he? No. So God doesn't come into your ear and say, Gwyneth, I want you to change on this thing. No. What does God do? God waits for you to have a desire to change and then God gives you every bit of assistance you need to change. Your law of attraction just changes, bang, you get all this different help from all these different people automatically as soon as you desire change. So, the trick is in the relationship. What do I do with Mary? The question I have, I have to ask myself is, does Mary want to change for herself? Now, if she doesn't, what does that leave me with? It leaves me with a choice. Do I stay with a person who doesn't want to change for themselves and put up with all the behaviour that comes as a result of them not wanting to change? Or do I leave? That's my choice. And I can present that choice to Mary. You can present that choice to your partner. But you cannot keep on asking them to change on all these little things all the time and stay in harmony with divine love. Because God does not ask you to change anything in your life. So if you feel that Mary is hurting you, if it's, if it's concluded that Mary has hurt you, mm -hmm. do you dis when you discuss that... Can I correct that firstly? Um. Mary, if I'm in harmony with divine love all the time, it's impossible for Mary to hurt me. Yeah, I know Mary you. can cheat on me. She can even murder me and she still hasn't hurt me. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, but but if, if she's constantly projecting anger at you... Right. <laughs> That's okay, I'm and, fine with that. And you're both acknowledging it. Yes. And now you want to discuss it. Now I'm out of harmony. So, no discussion? I don't need to discuss it. Okay. All I need to do is deal with the emotion in me, firstly, that it deals with that attraction, and then I just present to Mary. We either stay together or we go apart. So, what's the purpose of telling her that she's projecting at you then? To give... Well, the reason why I do it is I sit down with her and say, we've got a choice here. You're projecting this anger at me. We either can stay together or we grow apart. What do you want? Now, if you stay together, this is what has to happen. I need to love myself. And loving myself means I cannot continue putting up with your anger. So I am going to have to leave if this anger still keeps coming from you. I'm not saying to you, Mary, that you've got to change your anger. I'm not saying you can stay angry with me for the rest of your life if that's what you want. Right? But what I am saying is that while I'm receiving this anger from you, I'm not loving myself. And I need to make a choice. And you know what? Most of the time, we're just afraid to make the choice. Yeah. That's what really is going on. We're afraid to make a choice to love ourselves. That's really what's going on. Now, when I've presented that to Mary... Oftentimes, at that point, Mary sees what's going on inside of herself. And she goes through the emotions of why she was angry. And as a result, then, there's no longer the anger coming for that particular situation anymore because she's dealt with the causal emotion. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But I can't expect her to do that. As soon as I expect her to do that, I'm unloving to her. And by the way, I have done that. <laughs> so I have been unloving to Mary. Right? In the past. Yeah. Like an old discussion would be, AJ would say, Mary, you're angry. I'd say, no, I'm not angry. <laughs> He'd say, no, you're angry and, you, you know, you've got to look at that. No, I'm not angry. You're really angry. Oh, well, and I would go away or, you know, I would sit in my anger or intellectualise around it or um, justify it. Now it's more like, Mary, you're angry. And I go, you're right, I'm angry. Oh, okay, I'm angry about this. Uh, right. And then I'm in the emotion. 
Yeah. So there's not the And the same transition in between that was Mary, you're angry. Mary would say, no, I'm not. And I'd say, well, I'm, I'm walking out the door. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Is, is that... Can, can you be manipulative in that way, though? I wasn't trying to change her. I'm just saying I'm not staying in this anymore. Mm. Just not. Yeah. And by the way, I did walk out the door. Yeah. <laughs> we have a tent that's about <laughs> 500 metres away from the house. Right, and the instant Mary's been angry with me, I've just I, now I don't even say to her why. As soon as I feel it coming from her, I just get up. Mike's seen it this week, and he's going. <laughs> what just happened there? I didn't know what happened there. <laughs> I just get up and walk out the door and go down the tent. That's where. It, does that make sense? And then Mike tries to continue having a phone conversation while I'm in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> because the beauty of acting is that everyone around you knows you mean business. The beauty of talking is that nobody around you knows any, that you mean business at all. If AJ, had, yeah, if AJ had said to me, if you don't stop being angry, then I'm leaving. If you don't stop being angry, I'm going to stop loving you. Well, that's manipulative, that he's trying yeah. to get me to stop. Because I've actually told Mary that whether she's angry with me or not, I'm always going to love her. I, you know, she's my girl and she's my soulmate and I know, I've known her for 2,000 years and I know what she's like. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm not, you know, like I, I'm not changing in my emotions towards her. So, you know, the truth is I'm always going to feel love for her, but I also love myself. And, and in loving myself, I am not going to put up with another ounce of rage. Like, that's not owned. So I'm very happy for me to just say, you're angry now, Mary, and she owns it. I'm very happy if she does the same with me too, by the way. Um, but as soon as I say, you know, you need to, as soon as I say those words, you need to do da, 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 I'm really saying to her that she has to do what I'm saying. And now I'm out of harmony with love. Right? I need to focus on what I feel, not what she's feeling. What am I feeling? What am I feeling is I'm not loved here. When somebody's angry with me, I'm not loved, right? I'm not loved here. Why am I putting up with a situation that's unloving? That's the question I need to ask myself. That's the emotion I need to deal with inside of myself. And I don't need to even talk to Mary to deal with that. I can deal with that emotionally. Now, what I've found is that Mary in the past has not even wanted to know what my emotion was. Right? But now, Mary's very happy to know what the emotion was, is because she has more of a desire to know. A lot, of, a lot of your partners have no desire to know what your emotions are at all, right? None at all. And you need to address that, because that's an issue of self-love. Do you want to know what their emotions are? Well, that's an issue of the love of them too, if you don't, right? So the key, key is to work your way through these issues. Now. If I expect Mary to change on anything, even if she's doing something that's harmful to me, my expectation is unloving. You will get to a point in your progression on the divine love path where you don't expect any, any person around you to treat you in any way. Right. In other words, there will be people around you treating you very unlovingly, condescendingly. Uh, many of you have treated me this way, by the way. I'd like to remind you that you have. Unbeknown to you, like many of you, have treated me condescendingly. But what about the first time I told you that I was Jesus? And you heard that. What did you do? Many of you go, oh, yes, you always do. <laughs> well, you know, don't, don't you think I feel that as an emotion of condescension? Of course I do, but I still love you. You're beautiful, right? And I work through the emotion of it. So there's been many groups in the past. You think I've been doing this for quite a number of years now. So there's many groups in the past where I've gone to, and I've gone home and cried for four days because of the amount of projected emotion that I received at those groups. Right? But when you're on the divine love path, you do not expect the other people to change. What you do is you own your own emotions about what happened. You feel them. And the irony is you, tend up, you end up attracting a whole different group of people who treat you differently when you do. Right? So it's a rare thing then to be treated condescendingly. 
You'll notice it next week. Next week's an introduction to Secrets of the Universe, right? Any of you who bring along your friends or whatever, when you're going home in the cars and having the chats and whatever, you'll feel lots of different emotions coming from them about their response to what's presented. Right? Many of you have heard this stuff now for a year or two, right? So, or, and, and some maybe less, but many of you have heard it for a year or two now and you now have felt the truth of it into you, right? But at the beginning, many of you had those same emotions. You let yourself feel those emotions when you're driving home in your cars, when you're talking to these friends, because you'll feel them as really oppressive emotions and they'll trigger different things inside of you. Guarantee. Allow yourself to feel them. Own the emotion. On the divine love path, expressing divine love between you and the other person, you never expect them to change. You have a choice. You leave the situation or you deal with the situation in it. That's your choice. But you don't expect them to change. Now the irony is that when you change, many times the partner you're with will automatically change. Because there's a beautiful thing that happens in the soul and that is when you feel a emotion released from you, you are now in a state of forgiveness of your partner. When this emotion gets felt by the partner, they feel like, oh, all of a sudden I'm not getting blamed anymore. Whoa, that feels really different. They don't hardly even know why they feel different many times, but they'll feel the difference and they'll react to you differently. And if they don't, then you still have the choice. Am I going to stay in harmony with divine love in the situation or am I going to love and, and lo love myself, leave the situation? What am I going to do? Can I stay in harmony with divine love and stay in an unloving situation to myself? Can I? No. Can you see that? I cannot stay in an unloving situation towards myself if I'm in harmony and wish to remain in harmony with the way God loves me. So that's a very important thing to understand. Now, I've stopped some of your question. Did no, you? it, was all, it was all to do with um, changing someone else and if there was any... Um, yep. Loophole. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's brought up a lot of my... <laughs> my um, stuff to process <laughs> regarding how I manipulate yeah. men. So, yeah. Because, um, yeah, I thought there might be a nice way of doing it. <laughs> <But no. laughs> Can I just make a general comment for many of you ladies, and this is not a sexist comment, but it is a, due to a lot of multi-generational emotional injuries that many of you ladies have learnt to manipulate men without being direct. Because when you're direct with a man, generally you get a very direct response. Does that make sense? But when you're indirect with a man, often you can get a different response. Now that is a multi-generational emotional injury based around your own security and your own safety and your own fears in your relationship with men. If you can allow yourself to work through that emotion, you'll find you'll be able to actually be very direct with your partner all the time and many of your partners will love it. Like you're just afraid because many of the fears you have in yourself come from multi-generations of women who have been abused and harmed and who have had, they feel, had to have used these techniques in order to get what they want, in order to get protection and safety. And it's a multi-generational uh, issue for many women to work through. Yeah. And I found when I started to be very direct and honest and face a lot of my fears, a lot of things got triggered really rapidly, like a lot of that multi-generational stuff. And, um, but then it's a really liberating and empowering feeling. Mm. And also I feel when Mary is direct with me, even if she's telling me that she's attracted to another guy or she's telling me that you know she doesn't think I'm that important really or not that attractive really or any of those things, if she's telling me the truth and I can feel that's the truth coming from her, I actually feel more love for her when she's doing that than I did when she was denying that. Well, you can't, aren't you? If, if, to the, if, if you're being told the truth, it's a much more loving transaction, yeah. feeling in the transaction. It's a lot worse uh, hearing five years down the track that, oh, your partner never really felt attracted to you anyway. 
It's a terrible feeling to have that five years into a relationship. Oh, I only married you because you had lots of money and, you know, and because my girlfriend liked you and I was jealous of her or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, those kind of things happen, right, all the time, but, but often we never hear them for years. It's much more honest to be open, open and honest about it right up front and say what's going on and feel the emotions in between. And if you've got to go apart for a while, go apart for a while. Because if you're soulmates at the end of the day, you will be coming back together at some point if you deal with your stuff. Yeah. Um, could I have Raya next, thanks? Down the front, down the front here. It's all right, Mike. We've got Mike. Hey, Jay, a minute ago you were talking about um, the projections that you felt from us about you saying that you were Jesus. Yep. And as you know, I've been going through a lot of stuff around that over the, this one year that we've been working with you. Yep. And the other day I had this revelation that the reason why I was projecting that on you as that it wasn't true was I had real concerns about my own self-worth and why did I get to be one of the people to hang out around you. And that was a really big aha moment. Yep. Uh, so I just, my heart started hammering, I had to say that out loud. Yeah, so, and, that, and that's good that you went to the underlying emotion. What I was trying to illustrate though was the, the fact that I can, you can feel the projections and these projections occur whether you're ex verbalizing them or not. And that's important to understand in the relationship that you have too. You know, you can feel things from Brian and he can feel things from me whether you talk about them or not, you're both feeling these things. Some of them are going to be addictions, which we'll cover in, in a minute, and some of them are, will be, you know, just feelings that are positive feelings that you feel for each other, and you'll feel them. And so that's what I feel from an audience as well, exactly the same thing. Own your emotions about it, just like I've had to own mine. So it's great that you've owned your emotion about the doubt and, you know, then, then the feel, and then eventually the feeling of unworthiness that comes up. Yeah, the truth is, you're my sister, eh? Yeah, you know that now. Yeah, and I'm not saying I'm any better than you. Yeah, exactly. So, Jenny. Nervous, really nervous. Let's talk about sex, please. Let's talk about sex, please. <laughs> not, not you and me. It's, it's not I, <laughs> anyway, sorry, I was just getting Mr. Industrial. Go ahead, Love talk it. about sex. Please. I have injuries around sex and sexual projection yep so in my relationship I have the right to be sexually active I, I'm so confused okay I'm very confused let's look at the word you just said I had red 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 I need a red there it is you use this word right do I have the right to and then whatever after that. Sexually active, I said. Right to feel, right to be sexually active. Do, do I or don't I? Can you see that every time I ask a question like that, I'm hiding an emotion? So, like... I'm so afraid of your answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll worry about my answer in a minute. We'll talk about this issue of right first. Whenever I ask the question, do I have a right to, and then go beyond that, we're actually denying an emotion right at that point inside of ourselves. So let's look at the emotion inside of yourself, Jen. You don't believe you have the right. Otherwise you wouldn't be asking the question, right? Or do you believe you have the right? Wh which is it? See, ask a I question don't know the truth. answer, but my law of attraction brings me the opposite to well, what yeah, I think say, I want. Yeah, hang on a sec. I asked you a question. What do you feel is the answer to your own question? Because you already have a very firm belief about the answer. <laughs> I'm so scared. You need, to say you need to say what you feel. What do you feel? I think I have a right to Okay, say now we're talking, now we're talking. I'm getting some truth from Jen now. That's really good. Jen believes she has the right to have sex. Who else except who else feels that? Do you all feel you have the right to have sex? Well, that's true. You have the right to have sex with yourself. You mean masturbate? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, 
I ask that question because I, I want to understand exactly what you mean. You oh, need no, to I'm, be I'm being a bit black and white, please. Can, can I talk about rights for a second? I was going to talk about sex for a second. <laughs> You, Just this you talk about rights and then I'll talk about sex. <laughs> Go on. The concept of rights for me, and I, you know, I was really into human rights, child rights, I was studying all this stuff. The concept of rights is very natural love. I've got the right to this. Why do we even say that? Why do we say, oh, I've got the right to something? Because we don't have it because we want it, because we want to force having it. And if you're on the divine love path, you just work with where you're at. Well, I'm not getting it. I mustn't want it. You know, if we go into the, I've got the right to this, then we're trying to impact on someone else's free will. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, and the truth is, Jen, but the only... What, what happens if you're in the bed in the middle of it, yeah. and... You're all turned on. I mean, I want to be graphic here. I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah. But You're all turned on in the yeah, middle of... Yeah, right in the middle of it, and yeah. then suddenly there's just nothing. Coming from your partner? No, inside of me too. Right. So you stop. <laughs> but what? you're still physically turned on. You're emotionally shut off. So you off. start again. Start. <laughs> but what happens if he doesn't? What if, yeah. if he doesn't? Yeah. You can't control I mean, control it takes him. two, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You, well, you then start on yourself. Did you do a workshop on this topic? Yeah, well, the truth is we will be talking a lot about these kind of topics, but, um, but we won't be doing a, a graphic example. Um, <laughs> Ever, oh, that's ever. boring. Ever. Myself and Mary are very private about those things. But the key thing to understand from principles... What does divine love do in that instant? Jen, can I... Can, sorry. Go, go, go for it. Can you answer that question? You know. My sister, because you have been coming for so long, you know the answer. If you think about the principles of divine love, what are they? Free will, desire, love of self, love of your partner. If you're having sex with your partner and suddenly one of you loses the desire, what is the answer? You just stop. Yep. Right. And feel the emotion that it triggers. Yep. And if you still want to have sex, then you can do it with yourself. But what do you do if you're in a loving relationship and not getting fulfilled? And yeah. it comes to the point where you know you need to break up. You know, like... When you say you're not getting fulfilled touched. Ah, see that's different than what you said. Can you see, can you see many of the what questions you're asking? What does divine love do? Do you still have Can I just patience? stop you for a moment? Many of the questions you are asking, Jen, are loaded because they're not what you feel. You need to start saying what you feel, right? What do you feel? What's the feeling you have? You feel that when you're not touched, you're not loved. Yes. That's what you need to express as your feeling. Can you see that? But the confusion is because of the injuries in the past, I, I'm not sure whether that feeling that I'm feeling is true or not. But it's true because you have it inside. Right now it's your personal truth. So just feel about it and allow it to leave you and allow God's truth about the issue to enter you. Because at the moment you're not allowing God's truth to enter, because you're so addicted to the to to having your own. You're not not even you're denying your own emotion even about it. You're loading every question you ask at the moment with. Tell me, this is really emotion coming from you. Tell me what God feels about this situation, so that I can tell my husband what he or what my partner what he should be doing. That's really what you're saying, right at the moment. And you don't recognise that yet. But I don't want to tell Graham what to do. Yeah, you do. Because, yeah, you do. I'm saying you do. You do want to tell Graham what to do. Because you don't feel loved when he does what he's already doing. Do you follow me? And instead of just feeling unloved, 
you want to have Graham make you feel loved. And so you want Graham to touch you more. Does that make sense? You want him to touch you. And just that projection at him, you touch me, is an unloving projection. Because it's not honouring his desire. The only time he should ever touch you is when he desires to touch you and knows you desire to be touched. But if he says he doesn't <laughs> desire me, what am I left with? What you're left with is feeling the emotion of a partner who doesn't desire you. How does that feel, Jen? Shocking. So feel it instead of asking the question. Do you see what I'm saying? Feel that emotion. How does that feel? It's terrible. Like, I've had that emotion too. I've felt that emotion. It feels terrible. So feel it. Let yourself feel it. The irony is when you feel it to its core, he may feel like touching you after that. And if he doesn't, then you can say to him, well, now my love of self is, I can feel from you, you do not want to touch me. I can feel from you. I just I'm trying to check something. Oh, relief. It, just is, it is recording. It's just like, I just had this flash for some reason. There's this relief. Like, what, what needs to happen is you, you need to allow yourself to feel the emotion that he doesn't want to touch you. And feel that to its core. When you feel that to its core, you can then ask him, do you want to touch me or not? Because, because the feeling I have is that you don't want to touch me. And because of that feeling, I feel that this isn't love. That it's not love that you're feeling for me. For me. Right? But do it after you've felt the emotion. Because at the moment, you're trying to make him touch you instead of feeling the emotion. Does that make sense? Yeah. You want to say? Uh, just and also try and feel your emotions, Jen, about sex, touch, and love, because there's a few distor Well, there's a lot of distortions in there for a lot of us women, um, and for yourself and for me. So try and be really honest with God about what you feel about sex, when you get sex, when you get touched, when you feel loved, and how that all fits together. Because the truth is, they're three different things. They might be an expression of each other, but there's some differences in there. At the moment, there's still that separation between sex and love. And you feel that you can demand sex, and that means that you're being loved. And that's not the case at all. If, if you have to demand sex from somebody, you are not being loved anyway, right at that moment. And you just need to feel that you're not being loved and work your way through that emotion. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you feel, isn't it? Deep down, you feel this isn't love. Yeah. Now the truth is, at the moment, there's also a very heavy projection at Graham. So from the man's perspective, what he's feeling is this barrage of, you've got to touch me, you've got to touch me. I won't believe you love me until you touch me. Does that make sense? Now, what that feels like on the receiving end is like a demand. Does it, do, do you follow me? It feels like a demand on the receiving end. It feels very controlling on the receiving end. And so, if a man's sensitive to his own emotions, what will he feel? Hang on a sec, you're demanding that I touch you? Hang on a sec, like... I'm only going to touch you when I feel like touching you. Is, so there's going to be an automatic resistance to even touching you because of the demand. Can, can you see? And this is the trouble, is oftentimes what we're doing is we're projecting huge demands at the other party instead of actually feeling our own emotions of hurt. Now, I've done this myself with Mary. Like I've had huge emotions of hurt with regard to you know, um, me being attractive and me being... Um, like sexually attractive to Mary and all these things coming from our first century experience and as a result of that I've had to go through lots of emotions of feeling like I'm like Ma Mary finds me zero attractive like you know, well how does that feel my soulmate finds me not attractive at all you know, I'm not saying that's how she feels now I'm saying that's how I felt does that make sense and so I had to feel that emotion now, when I'm in that emotion and, and not feeling it, not ex what I'm doing is I'm demanding Mary touch me. I'm demanding Mary finds me attractive. Can I do that? No, I can't really. If I want to be in harmony with divine love, it has to come from within Mary. 
And if, if I know it's not coming from within her and I don't feel any of those emotions from her, I need to make a decision. Gets back to the same thing. Is this loving of me or not? I need to make that choice. And you know most of us avoid those choices. Don't we? For years. Like, you think, thanks sir. If, um, if you put your, keep your hand up. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. I just wanted to say to Jen, thank you very much for your vulnerability, the two of you. Both extremely beautiful. To be willing to be Can't hear you very well, Steve. Oh, sorry. I just feel that you're very, very beautiful. And I honour you both completely and utterly for opening up in this way. Yeah. Beautiful, Jen. So, so Sue was just saying how like, she appreciated Jen expressing it because it helped Sue connect with some of your feelings too, didn't Definitely. it? Definitely. I, I also just wanted to say that I think that this, any, any loving couple you, you haven't even begun to start to explore your love of each other until you run into troubles in the bedroom. Yeah. yeah. And from, from my, what happened with us and what's happened with me in two primary relationships is that they've started out and it's dwindled down and dwindled down and I had the belief that the loving thing to do was to just be a responsive partner and give the sexuality that was needed to keep my relationship safe. Yes. But feeling less and less and less myself all the time. Yes. And it's only in the recent, I guess, two years that Raj and I have started to explore being completely honest in bed. And it's amazing because I've just gone through menopause as well yeah. and gone through the whole thing of, of the drying out. And I can get medication for that, but I'm also very aware that that's happening because of what's beginning to become apparent in me. Awesome. Yeah. And what we're exploring now is that we just come into intimacy together and then uh, like maybe even um, Raj will penetrate me and we, but we lay there and he holds space for whatever emotion or physical pain or whatever I have to go through. Yeah. And that is so much more meaningful yeah. than, than what I used to do which is be this doll who had to keep, you know, keep the whole image of a relationship intact and alive. And I just think that yep. I, I don't know anybody who doesn't hit these walls if they're going to stay in a relationship together. Yeah. And I, I know that it's tied up with a million other deeper things. But yeah. yeah, working through sexual issues is a very powerful way to work through emotions. Remember that every one of your sexual issues is just a reflection of what's going on emotionally at some point. And this is something that everyone needs to bear in mind. Now on the divine love path, when you work through sexual issues, you understand that every sexual issue has an emotional attach, emotion attached to it. So if, I, if I'm a man and I feel unresponsive tonight, there's an emotion attached to that inside of me that I feel towards a woman. If, if I'm a woman and I feel unresponsive, there's an emotion in me about it. Now it might be general emotions about my day-to-day -day life, how unloving I'm being to myself, how unloving I feel my partner is being to me. It might be all sorts of things, but all of them will come out in the bedroom at some point. And, and if, you, if you can't work through them and you just have the sex act without actually looking at all the emotions connected, what happens is you can't come closer to each other. Um, I have emotional injuries around sex and um, I have a huge fear of men and a huge fear of love so I avoid it yep. and I know that I'm out of harmony with myself for that and the divine love but I just feel so much fear. She feels so much fear about... Sorry. About, sorry, I'm just trying... Can you say it a little louder, perhaps? <laughs> I know you. It's hard when you're emotional. I know, but I'm just trying to explain it because Mary's had exactly the same emotions you've had, and she can help you with this. She's feeling I, like um, I, there's so much fear about about men yeah. and being vulnerable to men, and and there's a lot of fear surrounding sex as well as a result, isn't it? It's, so I avoid it. So she avoids relationships with yeah, men, or completely. or avoids intimacy with men. But do you feel you also have a feeling of needing security? Or yes. Yep. yes. Okay. So there's those things going on for you. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, but 
Um, my question is, and I'm only just becoming aware of it. Yeah. Um, I I feel like I've been processing I'm unworthy all my life. Yeah. And um, that is a causal emotion. And no. I'm, no. No. Oh. If it was a causal emotion, you would process it and it'd be done. Right. So, so it's not a causal emotion. Or what you've been processing isn't causal. Yeah. yeah. Um, and my other um, part of it is um, when men are interested in me and they show interest and my initial reaction is to run the other way. Yep. Am I... Um, do I need to work through that fear with them or go away and process it, which I know I need to do anyway, but they're the ones who are triggering it in me. Is mm -hmm. it a loving relationship? And then I just feel fear. I feel terror that, um, that I'm not safe. Okay. So you've already identified quite a few of the emotions you're avoiding. There's firstly the top level fear of a lack of safety. Right? So you need to allow yourself to feel that. So just imagine yourself entering a relationship with one of these men. And then just put yourself there in your imagination and what would be wanted from you, if we could put that in quotation marks. And how would you feel about all of those things that would be wanted from you? Let yourself go there emotionally. Yeah. And there's quite a lot of emotion about that, isn't there? So allow yourself to feel that emotion. Then you'll get to a point where you feel like you're ready to actually try to enter a relationship with a man and work through the rest of the emotions. Because the truth is it's going to be very difficult for you to work through these emotions without getting triggered. And at the moment you're avoiding the triggers. Like, well, the, I think um, I've been avoiding it and I think I'm at that place of you know, my desire to have a loving relationship and a family and security yeah. is stronger than my fear of all of those things that I've been feeling. All right. Um, can, I, can I just say, well, Mary's going to say it actually anyway, I think. So you go ahead. I was going to say the key, like, the, I entered a relationship and I still didn't want to deal with the issues. So I was, this is how I got to be very unloving to my partner because I was still terrified of being vulnerable to a man. I still was carrying this deep causal emotion that all men are just going to hurt me because I'm a woman and, and that's it. And it wasn't until very recently that... So for, for over a year, I just stayed in a relationship and projected that and put walls up and, and then very recently I let myself connect to that and... Um, did all kinds of things to trigger myself sexually as well away from AJ because there was a lot of things coming up in our sex life but because I was so full of shame and terror and all of this kind of thing it just even though he was lovingly encouraging me to go to the emotion I, I just really couldn't do it until I actually triggered myself um, away from it so the key is even if you feel like you're ready to go into the relationship, make sure that you, you're ready to be emotionally um, open to process what comes up. Mm. Yeah, and, and with where Mary's, what Mary's been doing lately is totally different to what she described initially, and that is lately what she's doing is that as soon as she feels the emotion, she, she goes into the emotion straight away. And what changed in her was this strong desire she has now to do it for herself. See, before I really wanted the relationship, but I really just didn't want to... Like, I didn't want to reclaim my own sexuality. I didn't want to do all this for, for me and for my relationship with God. I wanted to do it because I, I wanted to just be in the relationship. So it was always a half-hearted attempt. And it wasn't until I thought, well, even if I lose this relationship, I've got to be honest about where I'm at, about sex and about men and about all these things, that it, it really changed. So just check your emotions about like wanting security and don't let that dominate in the relationship like that's why it's good if you can start to process now before you enter a relationship yeah because that's the other thing I wanted to mention was that you mentioned a, a few things of why you wanted a relationship and to be frank with you a couple of those things are way out of harmony with love you said firstly well at the end of it you said that you wanted security 
Well, that's a fear, and that's going to drive you into all sorts of problems with a relationship. There's another thing you said was you wanted a family, right? Now that's another fear that yeah, is going I don't to cause. Want to feel the loneliness anymore. <laughs> Sorry. I don't want to feel the loneliness anymore. Exactly. And I'm, I'm sick of avoiding it you know, the shame and all of that because when I look at that that's what I get and yeah, so feel the loneliness thinking. now yeah. do it while you're alone yeah. and if we want to get married so we can have a baby we're basically demeaning the man <laughs> we're going I want a baby maker yeah. <laughs> so the I can have this other thing that, yeah. like, <laughs> that's not a relationship but I, like I've had, I've had an emotion, a stronger emotion, when I reached about 28 to have a baby than I did to have a man, and that was really out of harmony with love, because and I'm actually in that place wanting a baby to fulfil a deep need in myself. Yeah. And it was really to fulfil grief about first century babies that you lost, wasn't it? So yeah. Do you see Thank what's you. happening? So allow yeah, yourself, you're in a perfect situation to feel your loneliness, so feel it, really feel it. You're, what I've said to you too, in summary, is that your unworthiness that you've been feeling all your life is not actually the causal emotion. So what then would that causal emotion be if I don't feel like I'm able to be loved? Where further is there to go than that? That I'm, do you know what I mean? Like I feel, I just, when you say, when you, you said you don't feel like you're able to be loved. Yeah, I don't feel lovable. You don't feel lovable. Like, I can't be loved. No, but see, I would put to you, actually, you don't want to be loved. Why would I feel that? <laughs> what well, might happen if you were loved? Pardon? You've already answered it. You said you're afraid of being loved. If you were loved, what will happen? What are the things you believe will, hap will happen if you're loved? A lot of pain. <laughs> yeah. Can you see why you don't want to be loved? Yeah. You don't want to be loved. Mary had this too. She doesn't want, didn't want to be loved because inside of me loving her was all this pain about our previous relationship that she didn't want to feel. Our, you know, the relationship we had for our life together that she didn't want to feel, the loss of that. So, you know, at the moment, you do not want to be loved. And you need to look at why you don't want to be. You're using unworthiness as an excuse to not get to that emotion. Thank and you. Yeah. It's a big emotion for you yeah. that love equals pain because you've created a huge other emotion, a self-deceiving emotion that feels quite painful but that pain is, feels preferable to you than feeling the pain of what might happen if you open your heart to be loved. Mm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Thank you. And by the way, I'd like to make a comment generally on people's feelings of unworthiness. You will find in your own emotional processing, if you've said, a lot of people have said to me, I've processed my unworthiness for years. Well, you're processing the wrong emotion. Do you understand? When you release an emotion, when you actually do your emotional processing work and you release an emotion, the emotion is gone. I used unworthiness for, for, five, for five years or more in order to not come out and just say who I was in front of a group. For five years I did that. I used unworthiness to not even talk to Mary when I first met her as an excuse. I use it as an excuse. Like, she'll find me unworthy, what's the point? Can you see what that does? What that does is it takes away my responsibility to actually act. Does that make sense to everyone? <coughs> By feeling my unwor so-called unworthiness, I'm actually disclaiming that I can't, I'm saying I can't do it because I'm unworthy. And really what I'm doing is just avoiding acting in most cases. All right? And this is what you're doing. You're avoiding acting in terms of ha having a loving relationship. And you question, you, are, you know the answer to the question is, why am I so afraid? It's not because you're unworthy. It's because you're afraid of the pain that might result when somebody leaves you or when something happens to them, or they might die, or all sorts of things might occur, right? 
And that's what you're afraid of, opening your heart into a relationship that then closes down on you for some external reason and how bad you're going to feel after that. And that huge emotion in me actually is a huge issue in our sex life because I don't want to be emotionally vulnerable, uninhibited because what might happen, you know? So it affects everything. Yeah. yeah. Anna? I am... Um, it is on. All right. Um, with, like, I was talking to you guys ages ago about feeling like um, I couldn't... I just wanted to stay angry at Tristan because that was that felt safer to me. Yeah. Um, then, then opening up my heart, I felt like if I was to open up my heart to loving and to being loved, that love would go, and I would feel like less of a person. I would feel like if I open up my heart and Tristan leaves, which I felt was inevitable. Um, he would leave with a piece of my heart that was irretrievable and I would never be a whole person again. Um, and I've still got those feelings to work through because I can feel it at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I feel like I had this huge, huge cry about um, how I feel about my dad dying and how... how <laughs> how it felt like you just don't die on somebody you love like how I felt I was so unlovable as a person that my own dad could leave me like even though intellectually he died it wasn't his fault it was an accident it still felt like it still felt like that mm. uh, and since then I feel like I've been able to I feel a lot more open and a lot more able to love Tristan without without such overshadowing fear. Is that you're saying? It's just like exactly the same emotion as me, Anna. Yeah. So Mary felt like she, if she falls in love with me again, that I died in the first century and left her. And so it's exa exactly the same emotion. You just had it with your father. That's the only the difference, yeah. yeah. Big emotions to work way through. And when you unblock them, it's amazing what happens to the rest of your life. Yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, it's after 5.30 now, so um, perhaps time to stop this evening. Um, tomorrow, we're just going to continue this discussion with questions and everything, so that's what we're doing tomorrow. Yeah.